You may have heard the same. Common sense is not so common. It happens every day around us where people break simple rules and exemplify this notion. For instance, don't text while you drive. Only cross the street when it's green light. Apparently not so common in New York, which is the very first thing I learned from there. We all have cognitive biases as to what common sense is. And this notion also applies between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. Here's an example. How would you label the sentiment of this conversation? Good morning, your flight is rescheduled to 3 a.m. tomorrow. Perfect. Is it positive, neutral, or negative to you? In natural language processing, the algorithm will put a positive label because it recognizes the positive words like good and perfect, but it might not be able to capture any negative signal. In fact, detecting sarcasm or irony is one of the most challenging topics in this field. Then when the responses from AI machines don't make sense, would you trust AI? It is time to reimagine the trusting AI. To start with, it's worth it to see what AI really is and what we should expect from it. Let's do a little experiment. Think about the phrase artificial intelligence. What is the first image that pops up in your mind? Is it something like these? Every time when we talk about AI, We use images with those octarian, brainy sci-fi robots that have little to do with AI. We should really stop using those because AI actually looks like this. Artificial intelligence is artificial, after all. At its core, AI is ultimately a process of optimization based on given inputs. It learns the patterns from given information and makes optimal decisions through computations. But when AI is overly humanized or sometimes overhyped, they seem to have the magic power beyond human intelligence. However, is it a realistic expectation? We're approaching, but generally, we're not there yet. Now let's take a step back and think about why is that? Let's compare how us humans make decisions versus how AI does. Here's a decision for you to make. Say that you and your partner have been living in Seattle for five years. Today, you finally got a job offer from your dream company, but it requires you to relocate to Boston. How would you decide? There's definitely a long list to consider your personal development, your relationship, timing, expenses, lifestyle, and on and on. If you have kids, 10 more items added to your list. As you can imagine, decision making is a fa fairly complicated process for us. Then how do AI algorithms decide? It's utterly simple. Finding the value of either minimum cost or maximum rewards through mathematical equations. And for this process to work, all the complexity of human considerations has to be simplified and quantified into several metrics or sometimes even a single number. Therefore, it's really unrealistic to expect a perfect transition from the decision making of human beings to the decision making of machines. So far, AI is a hardcore optimizer with strong computing power and also with limitations in its optimization mechanism. Now, let's just say we do have a perfect algorithm today. Can you fully trust it now? Don't forget, there's a condition. Everything is processed upon given inputs. For machines, these inputs are the only learning materials and the foundation of any trustworthy outputs. That's why we need to fit in sufficient, unbiased, and representative data in the first place, which is quite challenging, to be honest. Because in reality, we may not have enough data. There are always random factors. The data may not fully describe the real world, and the world is changing dynamically. So naturally, there are limitations in the given inputs. With that being said, with limitations in AI algorithms and in training data, 
how could we trust AI? Well, never just trust, but validate. There are a bunch of examples that AI could bring troubles in real cases if without validation. I noticed a project in healthcare. The model was to predict whether a patient would have negative or positive diagnosis by looking at their X-ray images. At first, the predictions were extremely accurate. After a while, the doctors find out why, and it's because some images were taken from portable X-ray machines and some were taken from regular machines. What does that mean? Think about what kind of patients get X-rayed from portable machines. The patients who couldn't make it to the regular machine, and those are the patients who are more likely to have unfavorable diagnoses. Turned out that this model is merely looking at the type of the X-ray device rather than the extra pathology. As a matter of fact, it is so common in healthcare that patients who have severe symptoms get different treatments than those who are less sick. But apparently, this should not be the only evidence for diagnosing. That's why, when given a model, we should always validate. Ask what drives the model predictions and whether those drivers make sense to you. And validation exercises can be done by not only AI practitioners, it can be done by anyone. For example, my lovely younger sister, she's a dancing teacher. Once I asked her to think about this and she looked at me, how am I supposed to do? Is there an easier way to validate AI? I told her, yes, there are ways for you to do it easily and critically. For example, validate with corner cases. Corner cases are just the situations that occur outside of the normal cases. If a technology works in both normal and corner cases, we know we could trust it to a larger extent. A couple of months ago, I was researching a very popular object detection technology. It is an algorithm that can locate and identify objects in images or videos so that we can do image annotation, face recognition, and so forth. So I, I was testing the model by throwing out some images. Let's take a look. Take the typical rush hour afternoon on a New York Friday. We can see that in this busy picture, the algorithm captured a lot of items. They are located in bonding boxes with labels indicating the categories and the respective probabilities. Essentially, those probabilities are telling us how certain the algorithm is. So here the model is 80% sure that in this yellow box, this is a car. It also detected the pedestrians, traffic lights, etc. This model is by no means perfect, but it did a fair job in general. Now let's take it up to another level by testing some corner cases. What if we apply a picture with a different angle, for example, from an overhead view, like this one? When the shapes of the items twist when we look at them from above, would the model still hold up? Now I got a bit confused. You can see that in the center, the people and the chairs were correctly and confidently detected, while in this corner, the, mo the model viewed that person as a teddy bear. It also missed the flag, the picture in the frame, and the table. Those are the variants objects that the model is supposed to detect, but it wasn't able to identify them in weird angles. Let's try another case. What if we fit in an image with incomplete information? For example, a partially covered cat face. Would the detector figure this out? Somehow, it totally missed the cute cat and magically detected three ties instead. I know, the kitty feels the same. Astonished. As you can see, by thinking critically, asking what if questions, and testing corner cases, it's almost effortless to validate. And the bonus point here is that being critical of science inspires science. Just like we saw it didn't work with the covered cat face, in July 2020, the US National Institute of Standards and Technology has tested 89 facial recognition algorithms and find that the error rate spiked up to 50% for faces wearing masks. Plenty of developer teams were actively working on this during COVID-19, and six months later, there was a huge improvement. 
In January 2021, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security tested a new algorithm, and it can identify airline passengers with masks 96% of the time. Wearing masks is a corner case for facial recognition, and being aware of this corner case accelerated technology advancement. Yet still, a lot of times, AI developers might not be aware of the corner cases or the potential consequences. It really relies on everyone to dive deeper and validate from different perspectives. It's not only one AI expert needing validation from other AI experts, but also inputs from people outside of this field. Even if your expertise is in something completely different, if you are a musician, a nurse, a lawyer, a factory worker, or someone in sports, your input matters. Start asking questions towards the AI technologies that tries to impress you, or the data conclusion that tries to convince you. We're at a time when everyone is close to data, close to AI technologies, while we're also at a time when people and AI developers are far apart. So I'm asking for both sides to come closer and bridge the gap. For AI practitioners, in order to collect more corner cases and be more aware of the impact, feedback loops and platforms should be created and easily accessible to the audience. The audience, on the other hand, is also responsible to participate, not only just as a pure consumer, a passenger, but as a feedback provider. This teamwork really matters for, to help AI make more sense, and more importantly, it matters for advancing AI as a product, as a service, as a policy, and as a society. Now let's go back to the beginning of this talk, reimagining trust in AI. Just like how trust is built up between us humans, we spend some time getting to know each other through both glorious and imperfections, test each other with corner cases, subconsciously or consciously, see each other experiencing fun time and downtime, and work on challenges together. Then eventually, you know if you trust that person. It's the same with AI. We build trust with AI through understanding what it really is, acknowledging its limitations through interactions and validations, and more crucially, through collaborations. Trustworthy AI is always the result of joint efforts. We need collective human intelligence to progress machine intelligence. We're all in this revolutionary disruption together. And that is the idea worth spreading. Thank you.